Go is a statically typed compiled language designed by Google employees for high performance web software. It's known for its succinct, expressive syntax and potent yet concise concurrency model. Today, we strip down to the core of Go for devs who are familiar in another language. Fire up your IDE and let's all become gophers. You can install Go directly on go.dev slash DL. The Go CLI tool is responsible for building, running and formatting Go programs, as well as package and workspace management. So you don't need to install anything else. The most common IDEs for Go are VS Code with the Go extension, Goland by JetBrains, or any editor that supports the GoPlease language server. Create a Go file using the .go extension. Go is statically typed, meaning the type of a variable is known at compile time and cannot change at runtime. Go has several basic types, including int, float, bool, and string. Declare a variable with a specific type using var x int equals 10. Otherwise, use the colon equals syntax and Go will infer the type from the assigned value. Go's integers and floating point numbers come in various sizes, int, int 8, 16, 32, 64, and their unsigned counterparts, along with float 32 and float 64. Boolean values are true or false, and strings are declared using double quotes. Go also has complex number types, complex 64 and 128, and a rune type for single UTF-8 characters, declared with single quotes. Convert between primitive types by using the type as a function. Go supports all the common arithmetic operations, including addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If dividing integers, Go will floor the output, so be sure to convert to a float if necessary. Suffix these operations with an equal sign to apply and assign simultaneously. Raise to a power using the math.pow function from the standard library. To compare variables, use double equals for equality, and you can use all the standard less than, greater than, less than or equal to, etc, etc, symbols that you find in other programming languages. Logical operations are also fairly standard, using double ampersand for and and double pipe for all. Use plus plus to increment an int by one, or minus minus to decrement by one. Use if, else if, and else statements to conditionally execute code blocks. Go's if can include a variable assignment to execute before the condition, separated by a semicolon, making variable scope limited and code clean. Use the for keyword to create a loop with traditional C-like syntax. Provide just a condition to create a while loop, or omit the condition entirely to loop infinitely. You can use the continue keyword to skip an iteration operation and break to exit the loop early. For loops can also use the range keyword, which iterates over elements in a variety of data structures, like arrays and maps, providing both an index and a value. The switch statement in Go provides a cleaner syntax for complex conditionals and, unlike other languages, doesn't require a break in each case. Define functions using the func keyword, followed by the name, parameters, and return type. A function can return multiple values, a feature often used to return a result along with an error value. Parameters of the same type can be shortened. Anonymous functions or function literals and closures are possible in Go, enabling dynamic function generation and usage. Simply leave the name off the function declaration. Functions are first-class citizens in Go, meaning they can be passed as parameters, returned from other functions, and assigned to variables. Go does not support default parameter values or function overloading, maintaining simplicity and predictability in function calls. Utilize defer in functions to ensure certain cleanup activities, like closing a file, are always performed when the function exits, enhancing robustness and readability. In Go, a pointer holds the memory address of a variable, declared using the asterisk type syntax. Declared a pointer using an asterisk followed by the type, or prefix a value with an ampersand to get its address. Once you have a pointer, you can access the value it points to using asterisk operator. Pointers in Go are powerful but safe, with no pointer arithmetic, to avoid complexity and safeguard against common mistakes. Go uses pass by value in function calls, meaning changes to a variable in a function affect only the local version, unless pointers are utilized. Pass a variable to a function by reference, using a pointer, to allow the function to modify the original variable, which is efficient for large data structures. Typically, you'll be able to to tell whether a function is going to modify your data by whether it takes a pointer or not. Go's composite data types, arrays, slices, maps, and structs, allow you to group and manage data efficiently. Arrays have a fixed size, while slices are dynamic, created with a make function or literals, and can use append for growth. Slices are like windows into an underlying array, and changes reflect across all slices that share that array, providing an efficient way to manage lists of items. The zero value of a slice is nil, representing a slice with zero length and capacity, and no underlying array. Maps, created with make or literals, act as hash tables, storing key value pairs, and can also be nil. Structs are product types that group diverse data types under one roof, allowing you to create complex data structures, and can also be nil when defined as pointers. Otherwise, use an empty struct. Access properties of an array or slice with index notation, maps by their keys, or structs using dot notation. As a side note, you can also declare custom types that wrap primitives using the type keyword, instantiate these with a the type name as a function. Methods in Go are functions associated with a specific type and are defined with 
with a receiver, a variable representing the instance, placed between the func keyword and the method name. Methods can be declared on non-struct types too, and they operate on either values or pointers, affecting mutability. Interfaces define a set of methods that must be implemented by a type, but leave the implementation to their respective types, offering flexibility and simplified polymorphism. You won't see attribute requirements in interfaces in Go for this reason. An interface is satisfied implicitly when a type provides all the methods declared in the interface. Go is duct typed, so no explicit declaration is required. The empty interface, defined by the any keyword, is crucial in Go, as it can hold any value, providing a way to handle diverse types in a unified manner. Use type assertion with a switch statement to check the underlying type of an interface. And I think you should switch on that subscribe button and the notification bell. Just saying. Go promotes explicit error checking using the error type, which is usually returned by function calls. Error is a built-in interface that defines a method error that returns only a string, making it easy to define your own custom error values. To signal an error, return a non-nil error value and handle it explicitly in your code to ensure robustness and clarity. Common practice involves returning a result and an error value where the caller checks the error. So get used to typing if error does not equal nil in your code. Use the errors package to construct simple error messages and create custom error types for more complex scenarios. The panic keyword will immediately exit the current process. This is generally used at the top level of a program or as an absolute last resort if the error is unrecoverable. However, you can use the recover keyword inside a deferred function to catch the panic message and prevent a forced exit. In Go, a package is a collection of source files in the same directory that are compiled together. It's a way to group and encapsulate code, promoting modularity and reusability. Create a package by declaring the package name at the top of your Go files and organizing them in a dedicated directory. Any identifier, variable, type, or function within a package with a capitalized first letter will be exported, whereas all others will be private and only accessible within the package that declares them. A package can span multiple files, and if you're within the same package, you do not need to import anything from another file explicitly. To use any external package, declare it at the beginning of your file with the import statement. The Go standard library, encompassing a range of packages like Fumpt and Net, provides robust functionalities, eliminating the need for a plethora of third-party libraries. It's very extensive, including packages for JSON parsing and everything you need to create a web server from scratch. Print and format output with the Fumpt package from the standard library. Fumpt.println adds a new line character automatically and converts variables to strings as needed, providing a straightforward way to output values. Fumpt.printf, on the other hand, allows detailed formatting using verbs, such as %v for the default format, %t for booleans, %d for integers, %f for floats, and %s for strings. To concatenate strings and variables, use either plus or fumpt.sprintf, which formats according to a format specifier, but returns the resulting string instead of printing it. Concurrency in Go is a first-class citizen implemented through Go routines and channels. A Go routine is a lightweight thread managed by the Go runtime. Born a Go routine by using the Go keyword, followed by a function invocation. This can be an immediately invoked function invocation if you need to capture variables from a surrounding scope. Channels provide a way for two Go routines to synchronize execution and communicate by passing a value of a specified type. Channels are queues, so messages passed in will exit in the same order. To create a channel, use the make function and utilize the arrow syntax to send and receive values. A function can optionally receive a read-only or write-only version of the same channel using the arrow syntax. Use this for elegant, secure API design. The select statement allows a Go routine to wait on multiple communication operations, enhancing synchronization and state management. With the sync package, utilize mutex and wait group to manage state and synchronize execution across Go routines. Add to a wait group with the dot add method, subtract from it using dot done, and wait until all Go routines have called dot done using dot wait. Go's approach to concurrency through Go routines and channels offers a straightforward, efficient, and scalable model to handle concurrent programming paradigms and data communication. And just as a quick side note, I'm currently hiring for a full stack developer. So if you think you have what it takes to build a small property tech startup in central London using Go, TypeScript, Python, Rust, you can apply with the link in the description. And if I haven't convinced you to give Go a go, you might like to learn Python instead. And you can learn all of Python in under eight minutes using this video here.